Praise the Lord. We'd like to again welcome everybody by way of internet. We pray that you'll be blessed today. We have our young preacher preaching this morning for us, Ryan, and you all heard him a few times before. We're proud of him. He loves the Lord with all his heart. And we're just going to cut him loose in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give him a nice big God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. All right, guys, so I got a real burden on my heart today. I told this, som- this sermon, Hope for the Hopeless. You see, every Sunday when I come in here, I'm always talking with you guys. And like myself, we all have these burdens. And they're not like little things. I mean, they're big deals. You got like cancer, broken marriages, all these issues. And it can really, honest to God, weigh a person down. I actually wanted to start with a testimony, and it's just going to go right into my sermon. Uh, one of the big things, um, if you read throughout the Bible, it's that God really wants you blessed. And I know what you're saying. I know religion, at least a certain variant of it, has taught that God wants you only blessed. He wants you rich. He wants you in a mansion. And all of that, yeah, laugh. No, really, it's funny. It's just, it's terrible. And I want you to do me a favor. I want you to get all that you can out of the sermon. So I want you to forget you ever heard any of that. Because religion, at least religion today, has really stained the gospel. You know, it, it's totally blurred the vision of people. It's turned everyone off, including myself. And it's just not true. Mm-hmm. And it's just there to be a nuisance. So I just want you to forget all that. So when I read you some scripture, I don't want you to say, oh my God, Ryan's saying that I'm getting a mansion next week. Don't do that. <laughs> That's not right. That's not funny. I'm easy going. That's not funny. All right. <laughs> all right. So getting into it, like I said, God wants you blessed, right? He wants you blessed in your finances. He wants you blessed in your health. He wants you blessed in your marriage. He wants you to prosper. See, don't don't start that prosperity gospel fake stuff. I'm telling you, get out of your head, all right? So what do I mean by prosper? I think prosper, at least in the Bible, means without lack, right? It doesn't mean that you'll, so to say, get a mansion. It doesn't mean you'll, so to say, have a Lexus, right? But you will be without lack. Right, what did Jesus tell the disciples? Man, don't even worry about eating. Mm-hmm. Like, your father feeds the birds, and they don't even work. They don't store, but yet they're fed. Mm-hmm. And all these lilies on the ground, they're clothed, right? So how much more is the father going to do for you? So I don't want you to worry about that at all. Now, a common thing, at least in modern-day Christianity, so I'm just going to take a step back. You heard me say that this prosperity gospel, it was preached, I believe, around my parents' generation. It was like the lie, right? It was like the stain of religion that tries to attack the gospel. And that generation was prosperity gospel. It, it's just awful. They just wanted your money. I'm sorry. Uh, today, it's, I, I, at least what I think, is the popularity gospel. You know, you see videos of just kind of very worldly things. You know, worldly, I guess, dressing. And I mean, like, worldly. Like, lustful dressing on stage. You got Halloween in church. You know what I mean? Just not okay. <coughs> Popularity gospel. It's a lie. Mm-hmm. Anywho, another variation of a religious stain on the gospel is that God wants you literally hammered until you die. Like, you're not running the race. No, you're crawling. You know what I mean? You're not having a house. You're going to live in a box. Why? Because because the disciples, they suffered a little bit. And, you know, Job, you know, his life was pretty harsh for some time. So that must very well obviously mean that we are all in for it forever mm-hmm. and it's a lie mm-hmm. you, you want to know what something you want to know what at least i always got from job just you know piecing the whole bible together i think the book of job is totally just an explanation of faith mm-hmm. job was tried harshly and no it doesn't mean you're gonna lose your wife your family your house and have boils all over you okay mm-hmm. it's all right <laughs> but yeah he still remained faithful to the lord And there's so many key concepts in that. This isn't even my sermon, but I might as well, right? I'll tell you what, I've been fired up all morning. Uh, (laughs) I got home at 1 in the morning. Um, You see, all throughout the week, I'm jumping everywhere. I'm getting on track, promise. I just want to mention this, because y'all got to know I ain't playing. So all week I knew I was preaching, so I'm praying and I'm witnessing, because I like to stomp on the devil's kingdom anyway, even when my life is good. Um, And I knew he was going to attack. Because I'm preaching. You know what I mean? It's out of the norm. I'm doing something beyond for the Lord. Mm-hmm. And uh, around 2 p.m. last afternoon, uh, my wife actually scratched her eye, like the white part. And it's really painful. And, you know, you kind of got to go and get eye drops. We were in the ER for all that. Got back at 1 in the morning. That made me mad. 
um, because the devil's a liar, Amen. completely. So um, I've just been fired up since like 6 in the morning. I don't know. Well, I know it's the fire of the Holy Ghost, but it might also be the energy drinks I have. But I'm telling you, I'm bringing it today. I'm bringing it today. So I want to get in this. Part of the reason, you know, we hear all the time, you know, oh, uh, my finances have just been like, Terrible for like 20 whole years. You know, my marriage, we've been in like separate houses for like 13 years. You know what I mean? And it's all these things. And we're like, man, the Bible says this. The Bible says I'm going to be blessed. It has this whole roadmap for marriage. God said not to worry. So what's going on? And I tell you what, at least I think the number one reason after unbelief is that no one really has a burning desire to advance the kingdom of God. Come on. Now this goes hand in hand with seek first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Seek first the will of the Lord. The will of God is this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Mm -hmm. And love your neighbor as yourself. Right? Two commandments. New yes. Testament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one more thing. Go out into the world. Mm -hmm. Make disciples. Mm -hmm. Advance my kingdom. That doesn't mean like, let's just go, hey brother, you know, here's a little track. Good luck. You know what I mean? No way, man. Like, be bold. Like, go up to someone. I love tracks. I give out many tracks. I think those comic books are awesome. <laughs> I read them. You know what I mean? Nowadays, and you know, it's good. You know, you start out, you, you're going to step foot in faith, and maybe you do. Like, hey, here's this track, man. Bless you. That has totally fine when it's from your heart. We're meant to grow. We're meant to be bold. Like, Holy Spirit didn't come for you to be, like, timid. You know what I mean? You weren't filled with the Holy Ghost to even suffer. You know, you want to be blessed. If you want to see change in your life, you have to change. If you want to see blessings in your life, advance the kingdom of God. Go up to someone. I Every time when I get gas, it's just testimony, of course, I love the gas attendants, and they love me, believe it or not. And not all of them accept the gospel, and they still love me. Um, because, you know, and I don't preach in religion or hate. I just love them so much. Why would I hold the cure for cancer back from anyone? So, um... You know, nowadays I'm just like, hey man, the Lord loves you, like, incredibly. You want to read this comic book? They're like, well, what is? I'm like, it tells you even more how much Jesus loves you. And they'll say yes, or they'll say no. But they'll remember me, and there's always next time, if they say no. Amen? So, like, you know, if you, if, in whatever area you're struggling, even if it's, like, your marriage or finances, man, go out there and advance the kingdom. Kick the devil in the teeth. Like, don't sit there and just take it. Like, Amen. in the book of Acts, you literally read how Jesus commanded the disciples to stay in Jerusalem until the fire of God hit them, until they're baptized with the Holy Ghost. You know, like, it's so incredible because Peter, like, before that, he was angry and he was a non-believer. No, really. Like, he sat with Jesus, okay, saw him heal people, saw people walk, saw him multiply fish, okay, saw him cast out devils, and when he died, Peter denied him. It's in his flesh. What do you expect? But when he got saved, he turned right around and preached a fire sermon and at least 3,000 people got saved. Amen. And here's a little song. It says about 3,000 got saved. That's how many got saved. I wonder how many were there. So it's not like he was even doing that in front of a small crowd, right? He was bold, man. Like, go out there and just be bold. Like, kick the devil in the teeth. Like, has he hurt your marriage? Dude, go in the streets and witness. Has he hurt your finances? Go give to a homeless man. Like, make him pay. For real. I think the best explanation of this concept I've ever heard is this. Are you ready? I'm not going to hold it back from you. See, these are tips and tricks from the Lord, you know what I mean? This ain't me. You have an apple, right? Imagine you're holding an apple. You got it? Awesome. If you were to squeeze that apple with the strength of God, what comes out? Apple juice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In the other hand, you have an orange. You got the might of the Lord. Squeeze it. What's coming out? Orange juice. Okay, what happens if you squeeze an apple and orange juice came out? Then it's not an apple. It'd be weird, wouldn't it? It's not, you're right. It's not an apple, is it? Right? It's weird. It's fake. It's false. It'd be weird. What happens if you squeeze that orange and apple juice came out? Same. Same. So why isn't it equally, if not more weird, that when a Christian is squeezed, everything but Jesus comes out? Why is it so weird that when you're squeezed, you know, instead of faith and pursuing the kingdom and just wrecking the devil back, man, we cower? That's not in the Bible. The Lord doesn't say cower. I'm going to show you so much stuff of people not cowering. So, like, what is that, man? Like, modern day, I'm telling you, dude, modern day religion stains. 
It's horrible. Don't be fearful. So many walk in the press. That's a devil from hell. I tell you what, dude. You know where depression comes from? Completely in the mind, right? So you hear a thought. It's like your marriage is over. And you feel tormented, you feel sick, and you cry. And I, you'd be amazed how many people believe that's like God telling you, oh, it's over. When has God ever told you it's over? Show me that in the Word. When he says it's over. You want to know who he said that to? Satan. Last book. Amen. Last chapter. Amen. Done. Right? That's not from God. When he tells you it's over, that's not from God. God doesn't bring torment. He really doesn't. And I tell you what, the Bible says that my sheep, Jesus said this, my sheep hear and obey my voice and the stranger's voice he will not follow. Amen. You're literally not allowed to listen to that depression. You're not allowed to listen to defeat. Don't follow it. Here's an idea. If it brings you torment, don't listen to it. Just don't. It's a clear sign of the enemy. The devil is a liar. He tells no truth. That right there, I'm telling you, man. Like, I can preach this on blue in the face, but you need this revelation. Every single lie that came against every tormenting thought just isn't true. I'm going to lose my house. Well, guess what? I guess you're not going to, are you? If that's the devil, he's lying, right? Did you lose your house yet? No. Thank you. Amen. Appreciate the compliments, guys. <laughs> Amen. I didn't start my sermon. <laughs> I, I'm, I didn't. Amen. Might as well just keep going with it now, right? Talk it right. Talk it right. All right. So I have an example of some hope for you. We're in Acts chapter 16, and it talks about how Paul and Silas are imprisoned. Right? They're brought to prison. In fact, it says they're in the inner cell. Think solitary confinement. Okay? In that cell, they cried, and they complained, and they gave up. No. Yeah. You don't have to read. The Spirit will tell you that's wrong. Right? Amen. They sang praises, man. So loud. You want to know how I know it's loud? Because the other inmates heard them. That's right. Do you have any idea how loud you must have had to sing for the other inmates to hear you? Now, if you're depressed, you're not going to sing loud. If you're depressed, you're probably in Catholic church and you're like, mmm. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't hearing no mmm in solitary confinement. But I'm telling you what, if there's freedom of the Lord, and if you are spirit-filled, you're going to have what happened today in our church, right? right amen. So if we go that way, it does that. Awesome. You're going to be loud, man. You're going to talk it to the devil, right? And that's what they did in here. Loud, praise the Lord. Even in their defeat, in their shackles, they're probably going to die the next day. I can only imagine what they thought, right? And the Bible says that in that time, an earthquake came, it hit the prison, and it opened the doors. So many people today, for some reason, I call them sadaholics. You know, you've heard of workaholic? They're addicted to work. Heard of an alcoholic? Addicted to alcohol. Sadaholic. They like being sad. 